All right, so let's look at free response problem four from the 2015 practice exam. Here we have the differential equation, dy dx is equal to x times y minus one over four. And we're gonna make a slope field for this differential equation for the 12 points shown here. So let's start off making a little x, y table. Got 12 points. We got uh, three x's, three, or three x's, four y's. So I have x's across, negative one, zero, and one. And this is just a way to organize them. I'm not saying that you have to do it this way. Y's from zero to three. Whoa. And then we'll write the, write the slopes here. So that negative one, zero. Remember, this is just plugging in the values of x and y. So we plug negative 1 and 0 into here. Negative 1 for x, 0 for y. We get negative 1 times negative 1, 1 fourth. 0 for x. Anytime you have 0 for x, that just becomes all 0. So we got 0 there. So this entire column is all 0. This column, we have the y's are all ones, so we really just kept to care about the y minus one over four. So here we have zero minus one over four, so negative one fourth. One minus one over four, so zero. Two minus one over four, so one fourth. And three minus one over four, so two fourths or one half. And then over here, we have negative one for x. And then this, these would just be the negatives of these. When x, so this is still zero again, It'd be negative one fourth. And then negative one half. I recommend having a table um, so you can make it, so they know exactly what the values your slopes are because drawing them is not gonna be like, very explicit, but um, these points, you just draw these 12 slopes here. So let's do the zeros first. So all across the y-axis, we have zeros like that. And then a negative one, one. And then a one, one looks, yeah, one, one. And then, and Negative one, zero, one fourth, so something like that. Negative one, zero, negative one, two. Or maybe negative, whoops, negative one, one, negative one, two. We're going to negative one fourth is a slip there, negative one half, a little steeper, I guess. And then going across, negative one half. One fourth or none, well, or one half, sorry, one half, one fourth. And then here we have one negative one fourth. So it should look something like this. It's not like a difficult problem or a difficult just concept. It's just, it could be a little bit tedious, but take your time with it. Um, so let well, f of x be the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition f of 1 equals 3. Write an equation for the line tangent of the graph of f at the point 1, 3 and use it to approximate f of 1.4. Right, not a problem. We can do that. Because we just use... Um, Right, an equation of the line tangent. So at this point, we were gonna have a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, let's start from there. The m at a point is the derivative. At the point one, three, we're essentially looking for the derivative at one, three. And that would just be, oh, we have it here, one half. So then our equation 
will be y equals one half x. Whoops, y equals one half x plus b. Solve for b by plugging in a point, plugging in one three. Plugging in one three, we get three equals one half times one plus b. The y-intercept is then 2.5. And then our equation for the tangent line is 1 half x plus 2.5. So using this to approximate it, we just have to plug in um, 1.4 into x. So then plugging in 1.4, we get 1 half times 1.4. plus 2.5, that'll be 0.7, so 3.2. Whoa. And there we go. In part C, find the particular solution for the differential equation with initial condition f of one is three. I really like these ones. Uh, my students um, tend to struggle like regularly on these. Maybe I'm just teaching it wrong. I don't know, but um, I'm gonna go just go through it really detailed step by step. But um, yeah, I don't. Maybe maybe I'm explaining it weirdly, or um, it's just a, it's it's just a confusing concept at first for a lot of students. But let me know, I guess. So we solve this, or we basically are gonna integrate this, separate the dy's on the left and dx is on the right. So we'll have dy times one over y minus one on the left. And on the right, we're going to have the one fourth x dx. From there, we integrate each side. Here, like if you're just familiar with and done a lot of math, like I have, like you're going to get a natural log of y minus one. Just know that if it's like y plus two, a natural log of y plus two. This is just your basic reverse power rule. One, one fourth x squared over two. So this changes into an eighth plus our constant c. Now, um, since the initial condition f of one is three, we know this will be positive. So we don't even need the absolute value signs. And let's take the exponential. because so this is just base e raised to that is gonna give you this. Let's do that. So you have y minus one equals e to the one eighth x squared plus c. Now let's add one and solve for y essentially. We're solving for y here. y is e to the one eighth x squared plus c plus one. And then from here we want to we so we want to solve for c. We want to solve for that um, constant. Yeah, that's our constant of integration. And we're going to use a point one three to solve for it. So using one three, we'll have three is equal to e raised to the one eighth times one plus c. And let's not forget the plus one here. S -s -s taking away one, we get two equals e to the one eighth plus c. And so this is gonna be interesting. So then um this is remember this is the same as using power rules, two is maybe equal to e to the one eighth times e to the c. Because this is just, you can just add those. Um, so then this, this is just going to be some constant, or some, yeah, some coefficient constant. Let's call that A. So we have A times E to the 1 8th equals 2. E to the 1 8th is some number. So what we're going to do is to have 2 divided by E to the 1 8th. And that'll be our equal to A. This will be, the, this will be the coefficient that we're solving, trying to find. And then we're going to, Put, plug that back into our 
this equation here um, as our e to the a. So we can rewrite this here as a times e to the one eighth x squared plus one, plugging that into there. Yeah, y equals two over e to the one eighth times e to the one eighth x squared plus one. And we can rewrite this just as a single power. So y equals two e to the one eighth. Whoops, one eighth x squared minus one eighth power plus one. And you go further, factor out a one eighth and make it look a little cleaner, but that's it looks good enough for me. So there you go. I hope that helps. Um as usual, let me know if you have any questions and leave comments in the comment section. And um if you like this video, yeah, of course, give me a like. Um, feedback is always welcome, good or bad. I'm just trying to improve. And make sure you subscribe if you have not yet. And I'll see you guys in the next video.